Taipei, not to be confused with Tainan or Taichung, is the capital of Taiwan. So without further cities beginning with Tai, let's check out the stadiums and arenas of Taipei, Taiwan. Banqiao Stadium We start off with what appears to be the world's most colourful stadium. I'm not exaggerating, it's so colourful that these shots were actually filmed in black and white. Okay, the exterior is not so colourful, but the interior certainly is. The stadium is made up of two equally proportioned stands that resemble rainbows in shape and colour. What it has in colour it lacks in comfort, because the seating is just bare concrete steps that are all sitting out in the sun or rain, of which Taipei has plenty. Most of the football in this city is played elsewhere nowadays, but when they do play here I'd assume that most of the games are at night time when the sun hides away, because it's scared of the dark. This interesting looking monument by the way is a remnant of the Asian Athletics Championships that this place hosted in 1989. Tianmu Baseball Stadium Taipei might be the professional baseball capital of Asia in some respects, because this is one of three professional ballparks that you'll see in this video. Interestingly, this place is only allowed to host games over the weekends owing to the sound and light restrictions that are in place in the neighbourhood in which it's located, the Xilin District. It is home to the Taiwanese Navy Central Command Centre, but that would have nothing to do with it. It's probably just a more affluent area. That tends to be the case. Anyway, the seating layout here is heavily concentrated behind home plate, which is not always the case with Asian ballparks, but it makes perfect sense. There's not even any outfield seating, just a grass berm. I don't think many people are sitting back there though, especially not on a Tuesday. Situated in the heart of the city is Taipei Municipal Stadium, which was built on the site of another track and field stadium, one that was opened way back in 1956. The rebuilt stadium, this one, was ready just in time for the 2009 Deaf Olympics. I should specify the Summer Deaf Olympics. But then again, Taiwan doesn't really have winter, does it? Football is not super popular in this country, and this place only ever comes close to looking full when the national team plays here. Unlike Banqiao Stadium, this venue does have significant roof coverage. Only those sitting at the ends are exposed to what the sky has to offer. But the roof doesn't compare to that of Taiwan's actual national stadium in Kaohsiung, which not only looks like a snake, but harnesses energy from the sun like a snake does. Anyway, this isn't the Kaohsiung video. If it was, we'd be finished already. This building over here makes for a colourful backdrop. It's actually another sports venue, Taipei Gymnasium. A very interesting looking but very small arena. Too small for this video, even though it's now in this video. Another venue that does meet the capacity cutoff is the nearby Taipei Arena, which has its own metro station. So both venues are very easy to get to, as you might expect. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of this place is what they call the sky screen, which was the largest LED display in the world when it was installed in 2006, but it has well and truly been usurped. The sky screen remains on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Unless it's a leap year, then it'll be... Damn it, what is it? Yeah, 366 days a year, because February 29, yep, okay. Taipei Arena is nicknamed the Little Big Egg. You've probably heard that eggs can differ slightly from country to country. This is what they're like in Taiwan. It was actually built on the site of a former baseball stadium that was built back in the 50s. Despite the fact that this is an indoor arena, it does actually have a larger capacity than the baseball stadium we saw earlier. It's the largest arena in the city but not the largest indoor sports venue in the city. We'll get to that one later on. By that, I mean now. Taipei Dome, also known as Far Glory Dome. Far Glory was the developer of this project. Speaking of the project, it took a long time to come to fruition. The earliest of the planning for this stadium goes back to 2001. Well, probably even before that. However, they only started building it in 2012 and finally got this ballpark finished in 2023. It costs 37 billion dollars. To be clear, that's 37 billion Taiwanese dollars. So like, 
1.15 billion in United States of America currency. It's certainly a welcome addition for the baseball fans of Taipei, because as I alluded to earlier, this city is hotter than the sun, yet somehow not quite as hot as Kaohsiung. You could say it's smoking hot. Speaking of which, it was actually built on the site of the Songshan Tobacco Factory. I hope it doesn't still smell of cigarettes. It would have been nice if there was a little bit more outside light coming in, because it's a fixed roof, not a retractable one. But other than that, it's a very impressive venue. That's why it hosts the biggest games in the Taiwanese baseball calendar. By contrast, Xinjiang Baseball Stadium has a very low-key exterior that blends into its environment. And by environment, I mean concrete jungle, as well as a bit of the real jungle thrown in for good measure. It opened in 1997 with a capacity of just over 7,000, but the capacity was nearly doubled just six years after that. I wonder why that was. Was that about the time that all that chip money started flowing into Taiwan? No, it was probably all part of the original plans. I just wanted to bring up chips because people are always talking about Taiwan's chip production capabilities. Well, let me tell you, I've been there and Taiwanese chips are average at best. I just don't get the hype. Kind of greasy as well. The fried chicken's good though. Anyway, in a much more recent renovation, the ballpark gained some new seats amongst other things. It's looking good. Xinjiang Gymnasium might play a second fiddle to the arena we saw earlier, but it does have one attribute that Taipei Arena doesn't. It's a bit of a convoluted one, which has nothing to do with the building itself. It's the name of one of the teams that plays here. I'm talking about CTBCDEA, which is named after the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration of the USA. Bizarre. I guess it's to encourage kids not to do drugs. They even have their own little jingles. Don't snort, kids, just play sport, kids. Don't snort, kids, just play sport, kids. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, the first time I heard the demo of Don't Snort, I knew right away that we had a hit record on our hands. So I got on the horn to Gavin and brought him on board as a producer. And as they say, the rest is history. Who are these people? It doesn't mean the capacity cut off, but I'll give a shout out to Xinjiang Sportsfield next door. It's a pretty interesting design. And those were the stadiums of Taipei. My favourite of the lot would have to be... Uh, I don't like it when I choose the obvious one, but it's the obvious one. Taipei Dome. Hit a home run, have some dome fun. Thanks for watching, have a good one. You know, when we heard that the song was banned in China, we were somewhat disappointed, but we were also sort of expecting it, so thankfully a, a, a basketball team from Taiwan actually bought the song off us for something like a couple of mil, can't remember. The team's actually named after DEA, which is a bit weird, but you know, a song like Don't Snort is, is probably perfect for them, so it's quite serendipitous in the end.